Hi, I'm Ian Mean. I'm uh, Director for Business West in Gloucestershire. On the first day of COP26 in Glasgow, I'm talking to Jack, Jack Rabati, President of Bristol Chamber of Commerce, about her hopes for the conference. Well, Jack, tell us about your hopes for the conference. It's literally just started now. Well, um, where can I start? We start at the beginning. Bristol has a massive reputation already, green capital of Europe, fifth greenest city, according to the NatWest Green Cities report, um, one of the four best UK cities for green space. We've got everything to play for. We, we have the ambition. What I want out of the event really is that businesses are able to see the wood for the trees on their next steps, that they can feel really confident about where to get support when they get stuck or when they want to be more ambitious. And of course, to be ambitious, we can either view climate change and um, what's happening to our environment as a crisis or a challenge. Crises we tend to react to, but I think businesses are up for the challenge. This is about going that much further and making an impact that makes us a sustainable, fairer, safer world. Yeah. Now that challenge, uh, Marvin is uh, speaking at the event on Thursday uh, in Bristol. And I think he's going to spell out then the sort of challenge that there is for business. He's going to mention something like £9 billion could be actually available to businesses who took advantage of the green challenge. Yes, well, having the money is one thing. Knowing what you're going to be doing with it is another. And I think the challenge for us is to make it really clear where the potential is, the lowest hanging fruit, the way in which we can have the biggest impact most quickly so that we can reach our, our, our nations and global targets much more quickly um, without compromising on the success of our businesses. And I, I think it's all very possible, but we all have to work together on this. We all have to have the same messaging, the same information and making sense of what's coming out of policy at the top. Now, the big businesses are already doing this, uh, but what about the SMEs and the micro businesses around Bristol? The SMEs and the micro businesses around the entire country, all, all across the world, are completely relied upon. They are, the, they are the biome of big business. When their suppliers and their tier two, tier three, tier four onward suppliers are not doing well, the planet suffers. And I think big businesses are onto this. So what we do need to do is make it clear to the big businesses that our tiny businesses want to do business with, that we are a better choice for not just competitive pricing, but sustainably competitive pricing. Um, I think there's a lot of work that we can do within supply chains for that. And there will be competitive advantage um, for all of those small businesses and micro businesses if we get it right. And I speak as one myself. Now, Bristol, as you say, has got a, uh, a very clear role here um, from the time it sort of became uh, our sort of green capital city. Uh, can we actually go on to be the greenest city in the country, do you think? I think there is a political will and um, private sector will. We have pretty much every ingredient necessary to get there, including a huge strength in green tech, clean tech, um, tech for good. I, I honestly believe that if we are able to harness all of that in a joined up manner, we can go above and beyond what is expected of any city region. But Bristol in particular um, has, has a, a story to tell and a leadership role to take across the planet. What, yeah, so for business, Joe, what is, locally, what is the next steps? What are the next steps on the journey to net zero? Right, so many will have had uh, some idea of what scope one, two and three are, with scope one being what's happening within your business, your premises, um, the products that you buy, the services that you buy in order to deliver. And you can start looking at that right now. Um, you can even start having conversations with your suppliers if that is easier to do than looking at your own um, physical situation in your physical location. Um, there are many simple things you can do simply by asking a question of those you have some kind of leverage with. Um, 
but then also the, the, the other challenge is to be transparent about what you are doing and what you are finding difficult. I do not believe there will be very many businesses out there that are deliberately doing harm. They are not, but they have other challenges to face. And if we can help solve them together, um, if not in isolation, then we, we will make huge, huge leaps and bounds in, in what we're trying to achieve. And your message to the Prime Minister today as he opens the uh, conference? I think we need to evidence our actions. I need to know from, from our Prime Minister that we have, um, we have both political will as well as the resources to put behind achieving what we need to do. We, we all want to have confidence in an infrastructure that enables us to make the decisions for the long term without having to think about surviving in the short term. Jaya, thank you very much. You're very welcome, Ian, thank you.